Yes, so here's the deal. Let's let's talk about the rundown of days at the end of the chapter. So it would be silly for me to give you guys a test without giving ample time for you to ask questions. And I know that when we go over the homework each day, you may not have it done yet. So today, the point is for you to work on the problems in the closure section, which... which is like these problems, which you might remember from our review game last week. So these are on your packet, right? They're in your packet, all the problems that I want you to do. And if we chose them during the review game, they are literally the exact problems that I had used in the review game. Oh, what we also didn't do yet. I need to show you guys the mastery. So you know what's going to be on the test tomorrow. So if I was you, I would look up here at the board and give me your attention. So first problem, you're going to wait for you guys because I want you to see this too. Like to sharpen and sit back down, I'll wait like you're fine. All right, first problem. Oh, by the way, you could write down these page numbers. Every year people ask me like, how do I study for math? And I think the best answer I have is review the math notes boxes in your book. So if you wanna write down page numbers right now, I have on here all the page numbers that refer to those math notes boxes. So mean is on page 13 and median is on page 19 if you wanna review those two topics. So I ask you to find the mean and median of some test scores here. 13, Scale out the axes here. Yes, pages 13 and 19. Scaling axes, which that math notes box is on page 36. If you want to review scaling axes. Using the giant one, which is actually called the multiplicative identity. Fancy word, meaning you multiply. So multiplicative identity is that math notes box on page 48. So I ask you make a specific numerator, make a specific denominator, right? Two different fractions and then giant one, right? Use the giant one. So I actually fill in the number. It's like when we did times two over two or times three over three or four over four, right? Using that giant one. Mr. Smith is creating a way to sort people. Has different colors and a thing. That's probability on page 40. If you want to review page 40. Converting fraction decimal percent. So the answers that you found in, ooh, I should change this to problem five. The answers that you found in problem five from up here, you then convert them to frac or decimal and percent because you probably had them written as fractions. And then we give a nod to the old copy machine that used to exist that was super duper slow. If it makes 80 copies in five minutes, what is that copies per minute? And if I had 320 total copies to make, how long would that take? And the final problem, only eight problems on here, add and subtract fractions. Uh, yes, but you got to show your work. So the other thing about the test, and then I'll take any other questions or anything. Tomorrow, tomorrow, Mrs. Goldring's out, right? Because yesterday was her birthday. So you guys are going to come to me during Alpha like normal. But then I get to keep you in through Beta. So what you're going to do in Language Arts is just read tomorrow because there's no independent reading. So you have all of alpha and whatever you need of beta. You could use the whole period if you want to. And when you're done with the test, then you independent read. So I'm probably going to have both classrooms here because Mr. Hall doesn't teach math tomorrow. Eighth grade has a, a different class rotation. So you got plenty of time tomorrow to take the test. Today, you can be working with each other, trying to finish closure problems. You can be going over homework answers, like I'm going to put the answer key back up here. 
and run back through answers. So if people, um, I got to pass some papers back too. But if people want to review some of their answers from this chapter, I can go like homework by homework if you want to then ask questions on stuff. Um, or you can really just be working with each other. Right? Today is your time to prep. Any questions? You know exactly what's going to be on the test tomorrow. John, I feel like you want to ask a question. By the way, that's the math three. Oh, nice, thanks. There we go. Math seven. Good catch. I might need to zoom out a tiny bit. Computers are hard. So a lot a lot of the beginning answers were like responses vary, but then we got into some tougher stuff. So Anybody have any questions from the homework that you want me to do for you? Okay. That's not a grade here. You mean exemplary? So we were discussing this at a staff meeting. Um, and some of us give exemplary options, like extra problems that are like super tough. And some of us are really just looking for like, man, what you did was impressive. Like, not just you solved the problem and, like, gave us the answer, but, like, whoa, this was such a cool, like, way to do it, or, like, you just, like, really impress us. Um, so, like, yeah, exemplary is always a possibility. That's not your target, though. Your target is mastery, right? So, like, don't shoot for exemplary. Shooting for mastery and doing so well at mastering, that is sometimes what gets you exemplary. Sometimes I give an exemplary problem. We're just like, this is really tough. Have at it. Um, I didn't this time because there wasn't space on the paper. Yeah, because I need to ask you guys all of those questions right now. I need to check what we're mastered on and what we need to review. Sweet. I'm going to pass out papers really quickly. Layla, question? Yeah, like especially from 128 because that was last night's homework. Yeah, that's the page. One dash one forty, you say. If the probability, ooh, people came and asked me about this yesterday. I'm so glad you asked about this. If you want to know the fancy way we say this, this problem is a compliment, and not like, oh, your hair looks pretty today. Compliment is the other thing. So when we talk about angles, complementary angles make a 90 degree angle, makes a nice, perfect corner. But in probability, the complement is what takes up the rest of the probability. So if our probability of something happening, whatever, a certain result in the experiment, is 75.3%, the probability of not getting that result, well, I gotta take away the probability of getting that result, so it would be C, it would be the subtraction. Yeah. Of we would. Ours didn't have multiple choice. We just yeah. answered. That's because I made your homework and I didn't want you to have multiple choice. So what? Yeah, I edit your homework. If you're surprised, you obviously don't know me that well yet. So, so. If you think about our spinner problems that we've been doing, right? If you think about our spinner problems, look at how perfect of a circle I can make. Weird flex right there. So 75.3% chance Right, so that's the probability of, of the thing happening. If you want to visualize what they're asking about. What we're trying to find out is what's the size in there. But we know that in total, probability always has to add up to 1 or that's 100%. Or any number over itself. Right? So if we're working with fractions, you got to have like 20 over 20, 30 over 30, whatever. Other homework questions. And you don't have to be watching me. You can just be working on your closure if you want. Problem number. Uh, one dash one forty one. One forty one. Aha, it's the next one. 
Review of parallelogram area. The reason why, we should talk about the why first. The reason why is this actually behaves like a rectangle. So the area of a parallelogram is its base times its height, which are always perpendicular. So this would be my base, and this would be my height. So we actually use 9. We don't use the 10. Does that make sense? So you're going to do 16 times 9. Yeah, you can write two words in the line. I like to write it. I like to write it like that. But the reason is, we're adding the bases and dividing by two to actually chop this up into triangles and like make it like a rectangle. It's kind of what we're saying to have happen. But it actually for multiplication and division out from the it doesn't matter when you divide them. Even though I write them like this. Anything else? Or if you answer those problems, then ask me more questions and you got them. That's a really good point. We should go look at that one. Think she give me just a minute, because I don't think we ever did this one together in class. So I don't think we ever had a chance to do these in class. On your 1.2.5, on 1.2.5 worksheet, it said examples from class, uh, but I'm thinking that we didn't get a chance to do these. These are really big on your paper because I, I modified the question. But here, because this is exactly like what we're going to do on the test tomorrow, hint, hint, cough, cough, nudge, nudge, might just be the same. How do we go from 4 to 100? Just shout it out. We times 25. So guys, with the giant 1 here, we put 25 in the giant 1 on bottom and on top. All right? Or you could draw the arrows. I don't care. It's not like I'm going to take points off. So 3 times 25, 75 over 100. Now this is the one that's tripping up a lot of us. And I'm drawing it bigger out here so we can see it. How do we multiply, ooh, that hand went up and then back down. How do we multiply to go from 200 to 100? Aiden? Okay, so, well, you're, well remember division is multiplication. So, Tell me what you want to say. So I agree with you. We could divide by 2, but they're showing me multiplication. What do we multiply by? Yeah, a half. Guys, division by 2 is the same thing as multiplication by 0.5 or the fraction 1 half. So in here, we could write 1 half. My pen's kind of big. Here we could write 1 half. So... Like Aiden said, half of 42, uh, 21. This one was a pain in the butt. That didn't even get your attention. Obviously, kids don't care when you say butt anymore these days. Going from 16 to 100 is really annoying. So we... Teach you. Yeah, to find that out, we can do the 100 divided by 16. Guys, if you don't know how to multiply to get where you're going, divide backwards. Because we're trying to get from 16 to 100. I don't know how if we do this division, because you're using calculators tomorrow. 
By the way, bring your calculators. I only have so many extras. We do this division, and Dikshita told us we're actually multiplying by... Guys, this number is not a whole number on top. It becomes a decimal, and that's not nice, but are numbers always nice? Ah, numbers aren't always nice. What's this become, Dikshita? What's it become? The numerator here? Sorry, say it again. 43.25. 75? So that was on 1.2.5. It wasn't really a homework problem. It, it said we, we're going to do it in class, but you're going to do those on the test tomorrow. So, yeah. Other homework questions? Oh, yeah, the, um, uh, the homework question. Yeah. Scaline. 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 You're making me think of Skyline. <laughs> Get me a pony. So. You specifically said scalene triangle. But does the type of triangle we have change our formula? No. Guys, a triangle area formula is always the base times the height divided by two. You could also write that as one half times base, times height. The trick is, you gotta determine your base and your height by looking for the perpendicular. And funny enough, this is actually the problem from our mini mastery. This is the triangle from the mini mastery that we took last week that we have been like revising or continuing to work on. So we do four, we do 4 times 11. Okay. Guys, I told you, I sometimes use your homework problems in the tests. I just like, I'm an honest guy. If, if we haven't covered this, I'm a Boy Scout. Like, I'm an Eagle Scout. Like, I'm an honest person. 4 times 11 is 44, yeah. but half of that is 22. Oh, so that's the answer. Yeah, the answer is 22. Yeah, then you actually do have to use the 9.05 and the 5, and we don't use the 4. Yeah. Hey, um, everyone give me your eyes real quick, because i got to make sure I announce this to every class. I'm going to start not counting your work right if it needs a label and doesn't have one. we got to get in the habit of labeling. This is your warning. Label numbers that need labels. Because I need to know, is this 22 centimeters squared, miles squared? Right, it's a big difference. So we need labels. Other homework question. Yeah. Yeah, the definition of it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that, but thank you. I appreciate the compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Kylie had a really good question. You do not have to label every number, just the answer, right? Like the thing that matters. So I don't need to label these numbers along the way. I need to label my answer. An interruption. Will Brittany Conadu please come to the Perry office? Brittany Conadu. Oh, I should have said, I know everything. Whoa. Bold statement. No, no, I know. I know everything. Just in time, Miss Howard. John just said he knows everything. No, no, I don't. I never said no. I no, said words. It. He did. He did. He did. He did. He All right, what's it. up, Miss Howard? I was referring to Katie. Ah. Yeah. yeah. I'm like fifty-fifty on whether or not I remember attendance. I write it down, but I forget to like. Yeah. 
Thank you. Yeah, we just click a little thing. It just sends it to the office. It's easier than Infinite Campus. Infinite Campus. Should we check the answers for 128 since it was last night's homework? Oh, we should do that together then. Hey, let's do 145 together and then we can check 128. Oh, yeah, I need to turn things back to people. That is. That's Aiden Summers. If you want to compliment that you saw his math. Um, yo, I realized this was in a different spot. My turn in bin is still up here. My turn and bin still exists. I need. Well, I can just give these two people. Right? You already knew that that was mastery because we did that yesterday. All right, if you want help on 145, it's tonight's homework. Right? So, same thing we've been doing, kind of. Except now they also want words or pictures. Guys, but we did this a few homeworks ago. 40% I could write as 40 over 100, but we could also simplify that to 4 tenths. We could simplify that to fifths. All of these are true. Now, 4 tenths is going to be the easiest to turn into a decimal. So zero point four, but guys, to words or pictures, I'm I'm gonna use a two out of five, right? So I don't know, make like five circles and shade two of them. So that that does represent forty percent, because two out of five is an equivalent fraction. Now one six, I'll help you with this one, especially because if you don't use a calculator, you really need to. This is point one, and then six starts repeating. So again, to turn that into a percent, it's really hard to think about getting this over 100 or something like that. So we have to just kind of use our trick. It's not a trick. What we're doing is multiplying by 100. It moves our decimal two places, right? So we multiply by 100. That's how we get it to percent, the cent meaning hundred, right? And it is 16.6 repeating percent. Guys, if you just put 16%, it's not true. It's not accurate. You have to put the 0.6 repeating because those are two different numbers. 16% and 16.6, they're different by approximately 0.6. So what could I do to 0 0.375 to turn it into a percent? Move it two places. Being very dramatic there. 37.5 percent. Yeah, and then this could go over 100. Right? This number can go over 100. And then we need pictures for both of them. Right? So, or words. Like, you can give a verbal. Now, wait, does... Well, there is a simplified form of this fraction. Hey, guys, if you want more help with this, I'm going to keep going on this problem. This is 145 from your closure. This could be 375 over a thousand. Because guys, right here, 375 thousandths. And if we read this accurately, 375 thousandths. If a number ends in five and a number ends in zero, what could they be divided by? Five. So if we divide by five, Grab a calculator, help me out. Wait, what's the bottom of the Both of these. I can't. 375 divided by 5. 75 to 375. 
And then we still end in 5 and end in 0. Divide by 5 again. Mm, this. Guys, here's the, the, the major, like, this will save you a ton of time. This is actually 3 eighths. Point three seven five. Point three seven five is 3 eighths. You could do 3 out of 8, right? Shade 3 out of 8. Or you can make, like, little rectangles, split it into eights, make it like a pizza. Shade three of them. We got a little under 10 minutes, yeah. The what? Oh, it's one out of six. Right, so this fraction's not bad. It's like one out of six. Yeah, that's what you do. So here's a picture of six things. I could make six bunny rabbits or six kittens or whatever. I'm pretty basic, so I'm just making six squares. One of them is getting shaded. That's, yeah, that's a way that we could draw one sixth. Don't overthink it, right? This fraction is saying one out of six. Now, I could also split it up and make it six different things. So like I did over there with the circles, you could do, and then shade one of them. Right, that would also work. I'm going to do another problem that is like what's on the test tomorrow. Um. Where did 107 go? We currently have... You have like one, two, four. I did this out last week. It starts with one, two, four, and then you ripped off one, two, four to turn it in. So one, two, five is probably on the top of your packet now, and it goes until the closing. Are you missing any of the worksheets? Which double check what you're missing. Oh yeah, because you had this printed earlier. So are you just missing the closure? Yeah. Uh, there you go. Here you go. Uh, yeah, but the reason I was going to caution you that you don't need to do that all the time is like here, you don't need to do that. And if, so say like this had a denominator of 10, we would only need to change the one denominator. And when we get into bigger numbers, like say this had a denominator of like 40, we don't want to multiply the big number. We want to try to get up to the big number. So that was the reason that I was like, oh, it's like don't do it. And I thought you were cross multiplying, but now I understand you're just saying apply that denominator 
up there, apply that denominator up there. You're kind of taking a shortcut. So it's okay as long as you know what you're doing. Does that make sense? Basically, you have to face the lines. Like, try to do Because you basically do like a half of the graph. Like, yeah. you run a guy. Let's do this really quickly. I only have like three minutes left. Cool. I'm just running out of time. I'm always fighting the clock. All right, real quick scaling axes. Um, and I did not. I will tell you, I did not keep these on the test. These are not on the test. But scaling the axes are. So if you need help scaling axes, give me your eyes. How we do this is we do distance. Distance divided by like jumps or gaps or steps. So one, two, three. We'll take 75 and divide it by three. That will tell me the size of each is 25. So now we go label 25, 50, and it does work out that that should be 75. If we do that again, Our distance of 75, how many jumps? One, two, three, four, five. And that actually comes out to be 15. So that would say each of these is 15. So 15, 30, 45, 60, and 75. This one would be 50 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And each of them is 10. You have about two minutes left. Do not turn in any two, like 125, 126, 127. Do not turn that in. I don't want it till tomorrow. So, Kylie, I don't want this. I'll take your one, two, four, because that one was due. I forgot. You might be allowed to use that tomorrow. Then I need my homework Yep, you are correct. Because you might be allowed to use that tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, 15, 30, 45. Okay, I uh, I am still stuck. I'm still stuck back in 2020 or 2019. We have 10 minutes left. You have 10 more minutes to work. Oh yeah, we do. We have 58. Yeah, I can't look. I can't tell time. It's hard. Telling time is hard. It is really. I want you to do it because I got my work done. Oh, you got more time to work done. So you don't have work for your area. I don't actually know what the answer is. You can just the answers in the book. Pull it out if you want the answers or any book. Closer. Um, um, so that would be I see what you So we wanted if we wanted this entire part, we would have the one pointers with the one points. So every one point is how many points? No, you say and then one on our area. 
It is not on the test this week. Because I don't think so. On your closure. Yo, give me your eyes up here for a second. On your closure, this problem asks you to find the perimeter in the area of this shape. It's not a normal shape. But it is two normal shapes. You could either split it right here and make two rectangles. Or you could split it right here and make two rectangles. I like the second option better. It's, it's not better or worse. I just like it better. So if I look at this section, what are my dimensions of that section? Nine, nine, nine and, 11. and 11. So nine times 11. Because area seems like it's the hard part. Perimeter, we walk around and add things up. Over here, though. Crap. What's this dimension? Ah, we got to add the 9 and the 6. So it's actually 15. So now the area in here is 15 times 8. Whatever that gets us. Probably some big number. I give this like um, 2, 100, 150. On the closure, the point of the closure is for you to check, are you ready for the mastery? So, the answers are in the book. If you tonight want to check the closure answers, they're literally flip two more pages from where the closure questions are, your answers are in the book. Keep on working. It's two different rectangles. So I have this rectangle, and then I have this rectangle. So my purple uses the 9 and the 11, but my green uses this 18 and this 15. That's why it's not 29. Hey, you guys are Mrs. Goldring's last class today before she leaves because she doesn't teach block two. You should wish her like to tell happy, her happy, well, happy birthday. sure, or like tell her have a good time tonight or enjoy the show or say something nice because you know she likes that stuff. What's up, Layla? They went all according to plan. Yeah, all plan. Did you like it? Yeah. What did she did she tell you? How young she is? Yeah. Really? Oh, this is so good. Cool. I was guessing like forty-two. The only reason that I would guess that she was older is she's gonna retire. That's the only way that like, you know, at the end of this year is her plan. She's at that point. 
This is not like secret news. Yeah, At least I really don't like she talks son. about it. Yeah. This is her last year teaching. I think part of it is because her friend retired like a year or two ago, and that was like her best teacher friend. So, as much as we try, we can't tell that. You can be trusted. People like to joke about if Mrs. Gordon and I were married, because I like to build things, and she's a pack rat. Like, she, like, not a pack rat, but she, like, if you ever watch, like, Flea Market Flip, she would be, like, we would do that. Like, if somehow we were, like, closer in age and somehow we ended up married, like, we would do, like, flea market flip, probably. Um, that's not too weird. All right, I mean, you know what flea market flip is? You buy, like, somebody's old kind of crappy, like, an old chest or an old dresser or something, and then you fix it up. So, like, you sand it and paint it and decorate it. And Mrs. Golden was an interior decorator. So she took some time off of teaching, and she went and, like, helped people decorate their houses and stuff. And so she knows design and decoration, and I can build. Like, I don't really need to build. Like, I built that desk, my wood desk over there. Yeah. So, like, when the pandemic hit, I needed a desk at home, so I built that. So, like, just, it's math. It's all math. All right. Pack it up. Head on out. If you don't believe me, it's all right here, Mr. Abbott. I heard you say, no, it's not. These are a bunch of my plans from building stuff. Like, uh, somebody said, no, it's not. He's saying it's all math. Are you married? Yeah. My wife's name is Chelsea. She works for the Ohio Department of Health. Oh.